What's up, everybody? I'm Marcus. I'm Ryan. And together, we are the Northwest, Northwest Sports Fanatics. Fanatics. We back here, you know, the big game has just passed. Right. A little disappointed. Really disappointed. You know, uh, we also got my man, special guest today, uh, Richard Gatewood, two-time All-Big Sky receiver from Montana State, uh, also formerly with the Oakland Raiders, and uh, head trainer at Leading Edge Advantage. What's happening, Mr. Gatewood? <laughs> hey, he got the sunglass swag on today. Wow, <laughs> all year round, all day. <laughs> uh, all right, so we just want to do a quick recap, and uh, also, uh, you know, some of our favorites going into to next year. Some, some who we think will, is going to make it back to the big game. So the Super Bowl, wow. Wow. I, I'm still stuck on it. What about you, Rick? You, did you expect that type of game? I am extremely disappointed. <laughs> I, did not expect that. I did not expect that at all, man. Uh, and I'm going to be that probably getting everybody is just disappointed in the game. They got the results they want, but it's just the game itself, man. The number one offense going to get the number one defense. It's just taking a little bit more fire than the number one offense, so. Yeah, that's that's the protocol, and it, they definitely proved that it's still true. Yeah, it seemed like the AFC and NFC championship games were a lot more exciting than the actual Super Bowl, which is kind of kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, some some of the uh, offensive standouts from that game, it, it wasn't many. Um, Russell Wilson, he had a pretty solid game, eighteen for twenty five, two hundred and six yards, two touchdowns. Also, like what Doug Baldwin did. Um, five receptions, 66 yards. Uh, he had a touchdown as well. To me, the X factor was Percy Harvin. Yeah, hands down. What about you, Rick? How, how do you think Percy Harvin performed in that game after being out so long? Man, everybody's been asked about Percy. Percy is Percy, man. When he's on the field, he's exactly what he is. Everybody knows what he I definitely do think he's uh, with a whole season under his belt. He's MVP type uh, considerations worthy type of player like that because of the so many different things that he can do right. when he got the ball in his hands. Right. Um, also from that game, you know, uh, wasn't too much from the Broncos side of the ball. I mean, they was held to 306 total yards. Uh, you score eight points, four turnovers. Um, Demarius Thomas is basically the, the only player who, who showed up. 13 receptions, 118 yards. Uh, that the whole game just started out bad from the get go. To the the him bringing the, the the first kickoff. Trent Holiday brought the kickoff out the end zone. Right. And he only got to like the 14, right. which set up for the snap over the head and everything. Right. Uh, what about on defense? Any defensive standouts there? Uh, defense, obviously, there wasn't a whole lot for Denver, but for Seattle, there's a few names. Cam Chancellor, <clears throat> you know, he started off with that big hit. Obviously, there in the very beginning of the game in that first quarter on Demarius Thomas, and it actually is revealed now that he had a separated shoulder from that hit. From that hit, wow. And so, that, no excuses, but, I mean, you're still going to lose that game, but that obviously had an impact. Uh, five tackles, one pick by Chancellor, Legion of Boom, you know, obviously carrying the load. But a lot of the names that you might have not heard of as much really had the impact. Mm -hmm. Byron Maxwell... Four tackles, one forced fumble. Pretty solid game. Chris Clemens, he was probably their best pass rusher last year, and he was injured. Two tackles, one sack, two forced fumbles. Okay. So he actually played better than Michael Bennett or Cliff Avril, surprisingly. And then the MVP, who? Who? Malcolm Smith, who? Who? Right? Five tackles, one, one interception. Um, obviously, Malcolm Smith, you know, with that key, awesome. 
key interception, running it back. You know, uh, it's hard to win when you have plays like that happen for Denver. Seventh round draft pick out of USC, so he was a uh, real familiar uh, with Pete uh, Pete Carroll right, right there. Um, what, what you think about Malcolm Smith, uh, Rick? He's definitely hands down the the, the best corner uh, in the game right now, and uh, stay away. He he got that caution sign over there on the left side right. for him. Yeah, and a few other stats I just wanted to throw out there. What really made the key difference in the Super Bowl? You think pass rush, mm -hmm. but there's other stats that were involved. Rushing yards, Denver 27. Wow. Right, Seattle 135. Right, so Beast Mode didn't really have a lot, had in the 30s, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously collectively with Percy Harvin, little fly sweeps, obviously that makes a difference. Return yardage, Denver, 114, right, which isn't too bad, yeah. but Seattle, 178, including that Percy Harvin Percy touchdown Harvin. right after mm -hmm. halftime. That was key. That was and then last but not least, field goals, right? Denver Broncos, Matt Prater, zero, mm -hmm. right? Hauschka, two for two. So that really ends up being the difference, especially with the pass rush. On top of all those stats, you're, you're not going to win that game based on those kind of stats. You definitely aren't. Um, it, it left a, a lot of us wanting more from that Super Bowl. But it's over with. Congratulations right. uh, to the Seattle Seahawks. You had an a awesome year. You are the Super Bowl champions. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Paul Allen, too. You know, a fourth time's a charm. You know, 90 and 92 for mm -hmm. the Blazers. Didn't work. 05 for Seattle didn't work. But, hey. Uh, this was the year for you, so yeah. shout out to you, Paul he Allen. finally got his ring. Shout out to the Legion of Boom, the whole Seattle squad. Um, now it's, it's time to turn the page. Right. Um, you know, getting look forward to next year. Now, you know, the next thing up is the draft. Right. Uh, who, Rick, who do you think is going to be this number one pick in this draft coming up? Uh, that's my answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to lean between Clowney... If you had to lean between Clowney or, or Johnny Football, which way would you lean?
like uh, he, he rubs off on you like when his energy just makes you want to play better. He's more of a, a better, more athletic, reverse Tim Tebow. Right, right. I can agree. He, his his charisma and his his whole personality, right. his swag, it just makes you you want to do more. Yeah, you know. When I see him, to me, I see I see Drew Brees and Russell Wilson together. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at the energy that you know Drew Brees has in the pregame, mm -hmm. I can see Johnny Football doing the same type of thing, and then I can see kind of the scrambling ability, you know, kind of like with Russell and, and Drew Brees do once in a while as well. Okay, and uh, so Rick, favorites for next year. Man, you put me on the spot. You put me on the spot, man. <laughs> hey, okay, I'll give y'all the advice, man. Marcus played better than Hank Day Hill gave me like two minutes preparation. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. Uh, no, no, no comment, man. We, 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 we rebuilding without the R though. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> we, we just building. <laughs> no R E. We just building. That's a nice, that's yeah. a nice. Yeah, I have to, you have to bring the Giants in there, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to have to take Carolina to round off the little top five going into next year. All those top five teams are going to be in the AFC North. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go with the Giants, man. Okay. Yeah, they 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 got some talent on that team. Yeah. Yeah, they got some talent on that team. 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 They definitely are. Uh, so with, with me, my favorites for next season, uh, of course, you know, uh, no bias because Rick is on the show, but I, I got to go with 49ers in the NFC. Um, I think this, that loss and seeing the Seahawks win it is only uh, adding fuel to that fire, that hunger for them to get back there. Right. Uh, another year with a, a healthy crab tree, the only thing I question is, is Bowman. Yep. And the significance of his injury and how long he's going to be out. But I do think the 49ers will, will get back to the Super Bowl. And uh, in the AFC, I'm going to go, who else? Who, do, who else do you pick every year? Tom Brady. Right. <laughs> you, you know, Tom Brady, Belichick, they was one game away. Uh, I think they just got the offense cranked up a little bit too late in that game against the Broncos. All right. Um, but I, I, they'll rebuild. They'll retool. And uh, they'll as long as Tom Brady and Belichick is together, they'll be back. All right. Yeah, and I think with me, uh, you know, I think that teams typically don't go to the Super Bowl back to back years. You got to be really seasoned. You got to keep your free agents. You got to draft mm -hmm. well. So I think a lot of people would say Seattle just because based on this victory. But I think I might have to lean towards the Niners as well. The Bowman loss is huge, That's huge. right? But yeah. with Kaepernick and Crabtree and Vernon Davis and that core, if they maybe can draft another linebacker, mm -hmm. maybe temporarily to fill the gap, um, I think that them and Seahawks got to be the favorites. And then on the AFC side, I think the defense is much weaker in that conference. So I don't think it would really matter who comes out right. on the AFC side. They're still going to probably lose. Yeah. But I think I'd have to go with you as well, Tom Brady. You know, Mr. Bill Belichick with that scheme. Uh, Peyton went this year. For them to get back next year will be tough unless Von Miller plays defensive player of the year stats and mm. breaks a sack record or something of that nature. But uh, I think I'd have to go New England as well. You can't you can't go against Tom Brady and, and Bill Belichick. They're going to get you at least the AFC championship game. So Each and every year. 
So uh, before we get up out of here, Rick, what you what, what you got going on out there, man? Uh, what's going on, man? Same old thing, man. Trying to play manager, manager, man, the company. Uh, this summer, right now, we're trying to get some business going on. Thanks for, for coming on the show today, Rick. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, I'm Marcus. This all Ryan. And together, we are the Northwest, Northwest Sports Fanatics. Fanatics. We'll be back at y'all soon with a new video next week. Stay tuned.